This guy's got uh, some opulence. Uh, yeah, they got a lot. They're making lots of money. This is uh, not the low rent district. If you are filming, filming is not allowed in here. Thank you. Is this a secret secret uh, proceeding? No, sir. Where does it say there's no filming allowed? Yeah. Okay. This property is only this house. One by one percent of the family's surprise. Huh? Yeah. It's all good. Interesting. The guy's got a Christian shirt on. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, they're just making money on the system. I mean, I don't... The system is... Yeah. This could be a while. All right, these are the ones being pulled for sale. Zero nine zero three four nine one on a hundred and eighth drive. Ten one three seven one three and eleven. Ten two 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 three one on Latona. Ten two eight eight one zero on Karen. Ten two nine two three one on Aster. Ten three zero seven four seven on Willow Creek. I'm wondering. I thought I didn't know you had been ordered to court. I, I put documents in federal district court. Okay, but don't they have to have a? I asked for an extrajudicial judgment writ. Uh -huh. Which means I didn't want to take it to court. I just wanted her to review my documents, say that they were put together, give the other uh, side an opportunity to refute or rebut, and then if they didn't, basically get a get a default judgment on the private side without disclosing all the information in the public record. Mm -hmm. So I I entered 150 pages of documents into the record, but I did a motion to seal all of those documents so that it was only judges' eyes only private, not for public viewing. And? And because and they she, sealed them. she sealed them and put them away, and she's ruling in the public, her ruling in the public was the stuff that I left in the public, just the miscellaneous starting mm -hmm. paperwork, was not enough information to show cause where relief can be granted. There wasn't, there wasn't a claim, a valid enough claim, would to, to show where relief could be granted. By not doing that, she could dismiss the case because I hadn't shown my cards. Basically, I put the cards in in a folder and I gave them to her. I said, I want you to review this and I'm asking for an extrajudicial judgment. Okay. She, she would not do that. She would not rule an extrajudicial judgment. She, so the, she, if she does that, she, she, if she takes it into the private, she doesn't get paid. Mm -hmm. She only gets paid if she if she acts on it in the public. And collect the court costs. Collect the court costs, exactly. So you needed to take some, some more of those documents that were sealed in the private. Well, I, what I need to do is now make a motion to unseal everything and say, you know what, I want it all on the record. I tried to keep this on the private side. I'm, I'm done. I can't do it. I'm, I'm at the end of my my rope. I have to I have to come into the public with this whole document. You're in the public and I mean, I've got everything. I've got the letter, the presentment letter. See, even the I've dismissal. All, my, all my maritime stuff in there, my admiralty stuff is all in there. For them. Even the dismissals or motion to dismiss is are just offers. Right. Yeah, well, that's where it's sat for a couple months. It's kind of been, been moot at this point. I just, you know, frustration. So doing one thing we know things. is they can't throw you out of the house without a judge's order. Well, that's true. Unless I want them. So they can sell your house, but then not throw you. And then, well, so okay. So what's the next step? They can try to make you believe that you have to write. Right. 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 The right. next step is he's he's in the he's in before the judge on the twenty first regarding his TRO. Right. That's what's going to happen next. 
Yeah, I have a, I have a hearing for my to, for him to grant that they did a temporary a granting to be able to allow another judge to look at my TRO to grant the TRO and to get the permanent injunction. Possible. You think that's where you're going to run into some? Uh, I think the judges are corrupt, and I think they're going to rule yeah. against it. But. So what we do? Camp out at your house and make them throw us all no, off? What I'll do is now in the discovery stages of this this case right now, I will start putting this stuff. I got an 11 page document where I've got uh, 30 uh, cited court cases that have have and show the precedent that is exactly what my precedent is. And I have I am stating that these above cases are the exact reason why I have a right to claim for relief to be granted. So I put that terminology in there. I've given them jurisdiction to. To hear the matter and go forward with it at this point. What, what's, what's, what happened today, Hal? Well, what, what happened today was very early in the morning, uh, a good friend of mine had done some follow up phone calls with uh, Tiffany Bosco, the actual foreclosure department. He's got a relationship with them since he handles trying to help and settle people's uh, uh, foreclosures and auctions. <clears throat> but he got. Uh, he got through to her, and they said they were still moving forward with it. And this was just before nine o'clock. Um, he called me back after he'd spoke to her and said, "Well, uh, I understand from talking to him and getting an email that, that he's filed a complaint uh, in Superior Court, and he has a, a temporary restraining order. And I can't believe you guys are going forward with that." So, in doing that, she said, "Well, I don't have a fax. I don't have any information on that." So. Um, he said, "Well, if you can do some checking on it, I'll call the guy and I'll have him. I'll have him refax it." So, what I he did is call me and uh, I, I got a cover sheet together. Attention to her that he specifically talked to, and it, it was a different fax number than I originally. The main line that, that goes directly to their office. So I gave uh, I gave her a heads up, and before I even got half that fax transmitted, he was calling me back saying she just called him back and said, "Yeah, they postponed the trustee sale until the 23rd, which is next week." 23rd, so it's going to be at the same place? I, I would assume at this point in time, yeah, it's just at the same place. It's just been postponed to the 23rd. That's two days after um, the judge, Judge McVeigh, is supposed to rule on my uh, temporary restraining order permanent injunction. Now, when I filed my complaint yesterday, <clears throat> and when you do a complaint, you file a complaint in, in Superior Court, it's uh, $301, and you have to have the complaint, it has to be identified. And you have to have a certificate of compulsory, uh, letting them know that you've read the Arizona Rules of Civil Proceedings and you understand that there's only a $50,000 limit you can you can sue for damages for, and that's what you're trying to compensate with. And then uh, the temporary restraining order slash permanent injunction. What I did is it's two things: it's temporary restraining order, get them to cease and desist, desist their foreclosure actions, uh, but and then it's and a permanent injunction to stay the foreclosure forever. Now, <clears throat> after I got uh, filed yesterday at the courthouse at, at 200 West Jefferson, the guy hands me all of the TROs and says, you got to go across the street to the uh, um, courthouse to file this. And he said, it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Good luck if you can get a judge to look at it today. So I went there, and the guy, he did take it in. He took 15 minutes or so, and he stamped it in and said, go up to the third floor. He doesn't know if the judge will see me, but you know, by this time it was 15, 20 after 4, um, and they closed at 5. So I, I did ring the bell, got somebody to come out, they took my paperwork. The judge didn't, I mean, she modified a lot of my TRO um, because in the TRO it's specific language. Basically, it's, it's a setup for the judge to basically just put in some dates and, to, and to, 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 to sign it and approve it. But it states a lot of kind of caveats that uh, you've done specific things. And uh, you've met certain criteria, and one of them is actually go to court or whatever. But uh, she struck it out, initialed the things she changed on my document, but she did stamp it that she took a 15-minute cursory review over it. She made a termination to assign it to the judge, Judge McVeigh, and it will be held, and she set the court date for the 21st, which is next week. 21st where? Uh, it, it's it's at McVeigh's office in the northwest, it says. He said... So I got to look at the paperwork to find out. So we'll have an update as far as yeah, it'll be an update so on the 21st, that. So the 21st, there'll and be it's a court. be 3:15 in the afternoon. There's going to be a hearing at McVeigh's uh, to see if he will grant the temporary restraining order and the permanent injunction. Okay. So that's that's the first thing, and I'm guessing maybe because of the paperwork that I sent in, 
the 21st is two days prior to when they've re redid the 23rd, and I don't know if they're hedging their bet or if they know something, you know, under the table or whatever. If the judge is just going to buy off on it and maybe not grant me my TRO, I don't know. But for now, we stayed them off until the 23rd. We'll see how the judge decides on, at 3:15 on the 21st. I'll be there and uh, be disclosing a lot more information. Uh, in, uh, in addition to my 11-page uh, complaint that I filed, so hopefully, um, you know, not everybody's corrupt and they read the documents. I've got lawful proof of claim. I've got proof that Chase doesn't even uh, doesn't even have uh, any say so in the fight at all. Uh, we pulled up uh, Dave pulled up today the full title report, and it still shows that the only party that has any interest in it is the original company, which is Crestar Mortgage, that is on my, my promissory note deed trust that I signed when they said they were lending me money. So Crestar Mortgage is the only name in the whole chain of title all the way back to the original when I signed in 2005. And there's just an assignment that's unrecorded. It doesn't show up anywhere. I got a letter from Crestar Mortgage or SunTrust which is an affiliate who handles part of their paperwork, that uh, Chase was going to be the new servicer of the loan. That's the only documentation that was ever done. So Chase trying to foreclose on me through Trip and Tiffany Bosco, um, they, they don't even have standing. They have absolutely zero standing because they have nothing in the records that, that shows that they gave something of value and are a holder in due course and have standing to be able to ask for a debt. Can you can you give us like an overview of, of some of the paperwork that you you know how did this uh, start off? I mean, do you, can you give us a little oh, overview? Oh yeah. <clears throat> well, you, I mean, it might take a little bit long, but just an overview. Yeah, I, I, I've got a five-page summary that, uh, and I'd be make I'd make that available for whoever wanted wants to, to, to get in touch with me or you. Um, but just a summary, very brief, in the uh, the remedies that I've done. Uh, uh, reading a lot about mortgage fraud and stuff last year, uh, I finally I got tired of it. In around June, I made uh, I've been making my payments on time every month. You know, it's about a thousand a month. Never had any problems or issues, but I kept hearing and reading a lot of stuff about mortgage fraud and securitization of loans and all this. I finally got to the point where I was like, okay, I don't know if these people have standing. They're asking me to pay for a debt. I've never verified from them if they're the holder in due course, if they have standing or they, they actually gave anything of value and they have a lawful right to claim a debt. So what I did was uh, I, I did a, a presentment letter and the presentment letter basically I, I've agreed to by the promissory note I, I was fraudulently left to, led to believe that I, I got loaned money from somebody and, and, and we know in fact that nobody put up any money and didn't loan me any money because that's why they're now in default. Uh, they won't show me that they have proof because they have no proof. But anyway, the letter, the presentment letter, what it, what it is doing in a commercial claim is say, you owe me a debt, I'm, I'm been paying and I'm in good standing with my loan, my current mortgage. I've been paying the payments, I'm good. But I've, I've heard and read that there's a lot of mortgage fraud out here, and I just want you to verify that you are the lawful creditor asking for me to pay you. I just want a confirmation. Lawfully provide me with proof that you are the holder in due course of this note, and the promissory note, and the deed. And, and basically you give them a, a, a time frame to provide you with the lawful proof of claim, which is, you know, the wedding signature, forensic accounting, uh, through a forensic account uh, that they actually ledgered a debt or they actually loaned money and took a negative entry into their into their bookkeeping practices, okay? So they don't answer you. They ignore you. So at the end of the self-executing letter, the power of attorney basically says, if you go into default and you don't provide me with lawful proof, I can only assume that you... You do not have proof, and you're not the holder in due course. So I'm hereby saying I'm amending the contract, and I'm not going to I'm not going to pay anymore because you haven't proven your claim. So that's what the letter does. Now, if they 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 don't, after an, another period of time, you write them uh, a process. You got to give them three three attempts to cure their dishonor. So 
You give them a first notice of default saying you haven't provided me proof of claim. I'm not paying, but I'm giving you the opportunity to cure this and say, look, provide me with the proof that you have this. Give you 21 days, you know, to, to, to settle and close the matter, etc. When they don't, at the end of that, and you're, all of these mailings are all either registered mail uh, with return receipt or certified mail return receipt. You do them all with a notary presentment. So you have a notary witness to be your federal witness that they did or they did not uh, respond back to you. So it's not your word against them. It's it's a it's a certified notary's word that that there was no response. So you do notary affidavits of non-response in the next mailing where you're giving them the second attempt to cure their dishonor. And then there's a final attempt, and then you do a nail to set uh, judgment. It's a judgment basically saying a nail to set is a Latin term for, for they were silent. So you, you basically are doing a commercial judgment with a self-executing contract because you gave them three opportunities to cure, and now they're in default. So you claim all rights, title, and interest to the property. Uh, you can file it. The next process that I did, I filed a notice of lien and intent. Uh, a, a claim of title. I've done a successor trustee. I've reappointed this the trust, the trustee and the beneficiary, um, because as the trustor or the borrower of this loan, the trustor is the one that funded it. If you look up the definitions, the trustor is the one who funded it. So if I funded it, how is the mortgage company or the trustee acting on my behalf, trying to foreclose on me when I funded it? So anyway, do your research on that. There's a lot of. Uh, a lot of information out on the internet for that, and I've just—I mean, I've spent hundreds and hundreds of hours researching it. A lot of stuff on it, but again, I've cured everything through this presentment. I've given them opportunities all the way to just show me proof that they're the they're the, the lawful creditor, and that I owe them money, and they they continue to fail. And um, Tiffany Bosco, Michael A. Bosco Jr., the trustee, and he's done thousands and thousands of these. They're just a, you know, essentially the attorney robo signer. Um, that's just, you know, they're doing a function because I, I'm in breach of contract. They're not looking at the fact that I amended that contract. You know, they they convinced me that I owed money, but I've asked them to show proof. They haven't. They're in default now of my contract. So I amended and modified the contract lawfully, and I allowed them three attempts to prove their claim and, and you know, restore their dishonor in commerce, and they've not done that. So... They keep pushing forward. Uh, Tiffany Bosco, Michael Bosco, um, Chase Home Finance, J.P. Morgan Ch Chase. Uh, they've they've all been notified. They've all been named now. In my the last thing was just yesterday filing my complaint in the Superior Court. I've got another claim that I filed by another process in the Federal District Court. But uh, trying to do this on the private side versus the public side is is an insurmountable task so that uh, didn't come out real well at this point in time however the offer that the judge gave me uh, I'm going to go back and, and rethink this thing to recontract back with that judge at the federal district court problem was trying to keep it on the private side I can't give enough information for the public to see it as part of the court case so the 150 page document that I set in there in an envelope for private viewing judges eyes only the judge sealed that and now, because he's, th th that she did that, there's not enough information in there for me to show proper claim for me to be able to have relief to be granted. So that's why she dismissed the case. So, I mean, I've just, uh, I mean, many, many attempts to remedy. Everything is, you know, it's not a loss. It's all just, it just keeps building and building. I'm currently billing... Tiffany Bosco, an invoice for damage for trespass, which again was done through a lawful presentment through affidavit of witness presentment. Um, they're in, they're, by going forward with a trustee sale and not changing and modifying the contract uh, and the foreclosure, both Chase and Tiffany Bosco are being billed by me. I'm doing an uh, invoicing monthly. $10,000 a day, which was a self-executing contract they've agreed to by their silence, by their non-response, uh, and I'm invoicing them, and I have that on file. I've recorded a UCC-1 financing statement showing me as the creditor and them as the debtor, and penalties interest is accruing daily, $10,000 a day. Right now, both of them, the last one that I did is up to $810,000 for each one. It's separate invoices, one for Chase 
and one for Tiffany Bosco. Now, uh, doing those, I also have got a U.S. US SEC flag, tracer flag, for the Securities and Exchange Commission to let everybody know that I will be, once I give them the cure time, a 30, 60, and 90 day notice that they owe me this debt, and I've proven my claim. What I'll do is I'll offer that up because I filed it with UCC1. There's investors that look to uh, buy those liens. Essentially, I'm saying that, that this is a valid claim. I'm a valid creditor through their default. So I'm putting that into the record. Right now, I haven't done the 90-day presentment. That will come um, July 1st. I'll send them another invoice with another 30 days, 31 days of uh, penalties at $10,000 a day. So that... Uh, That'll all get filed again, and I'll do it in an amendment, a UCC3 amendment, to my financing statement against both of the parties, and we just keep going forward. It's 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 a fight. It's not easy, but you know we're we're hitting it every day hard, and a lot of stress, and a lot of stress on my wife and my family. But you know, you're doing what's right. I, I do what I'm doing what right. I'm doing what has been recommended and what I've researched. I'm you know remove my mailbox. Um, you remove your mailbox from your property? I have no mailbox on my property. I have no numbers on my property. I, I took the uh, you have trespassing paint. signs. No, no I, trespass. Right. I got no trespass signs on on every every near every entry point off all the gates, um, and I've got no numbers on my street address. So there's no way somebody can uh, you know lawfully serve me with paperwork when I'm basically uh, uh, incognito. You would say I, I've. I've done everything I can to keep the dishonor from getting escalated to the point where, you know, they keep going with it. But, you know, we keep fighting. So let me ask you one last question, I guess. Have you received any correspondence rebutting any of your claims in any way, shape, or form? No. So you have made contracts with these people, and they have not... They have. Failed. They have acquiesced by their silence in every right. single instance. Not right. one exactly. single response to anything right. you've ever said. Right, right. So they're in default. They're, they're in default, and my and my documents prove that. And that's now why I've pushed this to a to a, a civil matter in superior court at this point. Uh, this time I won't keep it on the private side. I'm going to go on the public side, and I'm going to be disclosing all of my commercial contracts and all my liens and everything that I put into the into their private records, Tiffany Bosco and Chase all have everything that I've sent, all been notified, they've all got certified documents, um, and I've, I've done my best in an honor at every letter I've done to them is to be in private and not disclose this in the public, and I'm, I'm to the end of my rope here, so you know, I could do nothing except for finalize it and then get everything into the court, and uh, hopefully the judge will act in, in honor, see my case, and show that it's completely merited. And uh, I've got contracts in place, and under uh, you know, Constitution, there's a Constitution statute that uh, that shows that the judge cannot overrule anything that has to do with a commercial contract. So yeah, because you have an unlimited right to contract. I have an unlimited. And they right. had an unlimited right to contract, right. and they're by their by their acquiescence, they they have agreed to your contract. That, that's exactly it. By their silence, exactly. It's that's like it. you go that you go, getting a traffic ticket and not showing up to court. Uh, you lose. Right. Yeah, it's exactly. the same thing. It's the same thing. Same thing. thing. They've, they've, they've done the default. I've, I've given them the opportunity and they default. So, yeah, that's it in a nutshell. It's, I mean, it's, it's been an ongoing thing. I have not paid uh, my mortgage since last July. No, you paid your mortgage when you wrote, well, when you signed the when you signed the promissory note. I mean, according, yeah, according to their right. original contract, what they say, I'm in breach of contract. But like I say, I modified that contract or I amended that contract. Or you became aware of the right. fact that you already paid right. the loan is exactly. what happened. When exactly. when you pill, filled out that uh, the promissory note, exactly. you created the money at that time, correct? Well, that, that, that is right. You you know that, I know that. Well, I know we want to explain hopefully that to everybody on YouTube. Right. Hopefully everybody out there so on YouTube let's, knows about real quick. securitization and knowing about where the actual funds come from, which is not the securitization. That's a whole separate ballgame. But yeah, it's, this isn't just about the show me the wedding signature. This isn't about that. This is showing lawful proof where I've amended the contract that they fraudulently put upon me, and uh, just so push it forward. Let's to point my somebody in a direction if they are in a similar situation. Okay. Point somebody in a direction. How would um, how would, where would someone start if they well, were the, looking into this? Themselves? You know, there, there's a lot of places. Uh, you know, real quick. The, the 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 place I would recommend would be to get involved with the Republic for Arizona. Dot org. Go okay. To, go to www.republicforarizona.org. 
There's a lot of informational things in there. There's contact people. We do assembly meetings all over the state. We've got uh, several counties involved with setting up county assemblies and getting this back to a, to a common law basis for the way we live and govern our lives. It's uh, it's all about self-governance. We haven't had that. And a republic. And a republic. A republic form of government. The true, original, de jure republic that uh, our founding fathers created for us. We've lost that to this you know, mob rule democracy. They keep cramming down our throats. But uh, there, there's remedy to this and there's many people in republic that are uh, that are very cognizant of, uh, of the mortgage frauds and schemes and a lot of the remedies that we've got going on. We've got, uh, we've got a group of Republic uh, members down in uh, Florida and they're saying they've got 100% success with um, uh, mortgage frauds and staying off mortgage uh, foreclosures. They've got 700 successes in 35 states and they have a process and we understand that it's now an 11, 11 uh, step process and uh, we can get you in touch with these people. Right now they're completely and totally overwhelmed, but we're doing our best to get more people on board with helping out this process and saving as many people in Republic that uh, that want to want to come on board to Republic and not have to uh, live in a de facto corporation world and be uh, be handed a you know, stick in the eye. You're not a slave. Yeah, we are not. You are you are a free man, correct? It's true that. And you've asserted your that you are a free man living on the land. That is that is part of part of self governing. You, you you take back the right to not be a US citizen or a subject class fourteenth amendment citizen and you become a free man back on the land like our founding fathers were. So, so there also is a website for the country if you're not in Arizona? Absolutely. Republic for the United States dot org. Uh, is, a, is the main website for, uh, for the other and you states. can find your state listed Absolutely. in uh, in that in that uh, main website. Absolutely, you got it covered. Okay, all right. Well, thank you very much, Hal. You bet. We'll have and we'll we'll give you an update. So we're the, just one last thing. So last next uh, date is going to be the twenty twenty first at the the TRO hearing, and then the twenty in where downtown Phoenix. Uh, I don't know exactly. It's a it, it's a courtroom northwest is what she told me yesterday when she handed me my TRO back. Okay, so you will get so an update. Uh, Judge McVeigh, if you, you know, if somebody's out there wants to look in the near future, Judge McVeigh. Okay, so 23rd. 23rd. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Found it. All right, see ya.